Hey everyone, my name is Chris from Create Daily, and today I'm going to show you three very unique text animations that you can do using Adobe After Effects. I chose these three specifically because they are very different from one another, and with a little extra design work, it can go a really long way. All of the assets I'm using in this tutorial are from Envato Elements. They aren't a sponsor, but I do have an affiliate link below if you'd like to access unlimited assets for yourself. So let's get started with our first text animation, tracking. So we're in After Effects here, and the first thing I want to show you is some of our background elements that we're going to be using in this first text animation. So I have have a simple blue solid here. I have a yellow solid where the text is pretty hard to see, but we'll fix that later. And a grunge texture animation that is really simple to make. Basically, all I did was animate the scale position and rotation and added a toggle hold keyframe. If you want to know how to animate textures further, I will link another tutorial where I go more into detail. So now to the actual text animation. So what I'm going to do to start is go to our first text layer here, drop down our menu, go to animate, add tracking. Now right away when you see when I boost this up, it animates all from the middle. If your text is not animating from the middle, it's because your actual text here is set to either left or right aligned and it's not set to center text under your paragraph panel. So if when I go here to the left and I animate this out, it all animates from the left, same with the right, you get the point. So just something I wanted to share about that. So what we're going to do here is set a keyframe for our tracking amount at the start, go to one second and bring this out. And all tracking is, is adding kerning between the letters. So right here, here's what we have. Looks kind of boring, I'm not gonna lie. So what we're gonna do is spice this up a little bit. And to do that, we're going to jump into our graph editor. So I'm gonna click on both keyframes, click F9 to easy ease them, then jump into our graph editor here, and I'm going to bring these handles in. And what I'm doing with these handles is I'm actually making it so we're gonna have a slow animation from the start and then it's going to snap and then slow down again. So that's what we're seeing here with this spike right here between our handles in our graph editor. So right here, here's what we have. This is already looking so much better already. Now what I wanna do is actually mess with our background a little bit. So we have our blue solid and our grunge texture animation. With our grunge texture animation, I'm going to add a levels effect here and I'm going to bring this all the way to the right, basically until we can barely see some white behind the, the word. And that's looking pretty good, pretty subtle. Next thing I'm gonna do is add an invert. So it's all inverted. And then I'm going to change the blend mode to multiply. Here's what we have so far. You have your animated texture, your animated word. It's all pretty simple stuff so far, but I think we could spice this up a little bit. First and foremost, I feel like we're still seeing a little too much of this texture. So rather than messing with the levels effect anymore, I'm just gonna drop the opacity to let's say 30. It's a lot more subtle like that. That's looking a lot cleaner. Now what I wanna do is actually go to where we had that spike in our graph editor, which is at the 12 frame mark. I'm going to split this clip with Control Shift D. And then what I'm gonna do actually is change the color of this text to our blue. Now you're like, hey, I can't see this. What's going on? Well, I will share it with you. We have our yellow solid here. So I'm gonna bring this here and bring it to the start. Right when we start to see things animate in, we're gonna see a change. So here's what we have. So I like the way this is looking, but I wanna make a few more changes. And what I wanna to do to start is I wanna change our white text to our yellow. So we'll do that. So we have really nice contrast now. All right, I like the way this is looking, but we're gonna take it one step further by adding just a little bit of anticipation at the start. Let me show you what I mean. So what I'm gonna do here is take our tracking text. I'm going to pull up T for opacity, then I'm going to go down four keyframes, set a keyframe there, go up another four, set a keyframe. And then at this middle keyframe, I'm actually gonna change this to zero, highlight them all, right click, toggle hold keyframe, so here's what we have. All right, so you're starting to see the flicker here. It looks pretty cool, but we're gonna take it one step further. Now I'm going to duplicate our text. We're only gonna focus on this text and I'm going to change it to a stroke. So now this is what it looks like at the start. It's the same thing as before. And we're gonna change the order of our keyframes. So I'm gonna dish this first keyframe out. I'm gonna bring our second and third up to the start. Then I'm going to copy and paste our new first keyframe as our third keyframe. So what our stroke text is doing is animating in at the opposite timing as our fill text, which is really cool. So when I turn both of these on, you have this little flicker here. This looks really nice. And yeah, this is the first text animation. 
All right, next up is our text spray paint animation. And I love this effect and you will too. And to pull off most of this effect, I'm actually gonna be using my Wacom tablet here. This is a tablet that I use for different Photoshop and After Effects work. Whenever I've had to do this effect, I prefer using a tablet like this. So if you want one for yourself, I will leave an affiliate link in the description below for you to check out. So the first thing we're gonna do here is actually duplicate our text five different times because we have five different letters. So we're gonna go one, two, three, four. All right. And what we're gonna do is actually mask out each one of these individual letters. So I'm just gonna zoom in here. I'm gonna mask out our P. We will call this P just to stay organized. Next will be our A. So what we're gonna be doing is creating shape layers and animating those to bring on each letter within here. So we're gonna start off with our letter P here. And this is where I switch to the tablet. And I'm gonna pull up my pen tool. And I'm gonna bring down our stroke. We'll change it to, it could be any color because we're not gonna be seeing it. I'm just gonna make this, this red. And now I'm gonna to start to trace the layer. And this is already pretty thick, so to see what we're actually highlighting here, I'm just gonna drop down the opacity and realize, hey, that is like way too thick. So I'm just gonna bring that down. And I'm gonna continue making adjustments here to our shape layer, just so everything that is purple will be covered. And this can be a pretty tedious process, but when you get this process done correctly, you end up getting a really good result. So we just finished our P, we're gonna go on to our A. And this one's unique because of the shape of it, we have to actually go across. So I'm going up, down, then I'm gonna go up again, and I'm gonna go across here. And once again, I'm gonna just drop my opacity so I can see what I'm looking at, and see what other adjustments I need to make. All right, so it's pretty straightforward. I'm gonna go ahead and create our shape layers for each one of our characters. And then for this last letter here, we're gonna be doing the same thing that we did earlier with our A. So I'm just going to click here, hold up above, and then I'm going to click to the side and go across, just like that. And the next thing we're gonna do here is actually just label our layers so we know what is supposed to be matched with what. All right, so now we have everything in order, and if you just look real quick with me, we have all of our actual uh, mats drawn out and traced over our letters. And so now what I wanna do is actually create that animation that we were talking about. So I'm gonna go to our P mat first, and I'm going to drop down our arrow key here, and go to add, add, trim, path. Then I'm gonna go to our end keyframe here, bring this down to zero, bring it up one second, and see how our text will animate in. So you, just real quick, here is how this looks. Looks pretty boring, but we're gonna spice this up. I'm going to highlight both of our keyframes, click F9 to easy ease, and then I'm going to take our handle here, just our last handle this time, and then bring it to the very left. So it's gonna start off fast and then ramp off uh, in, in speed. So just like that, looks good. Now what I'm gonna do is actually add an effect to make it look like it was spray painted on. So right now when I look at the stroke in the actual shape layer, it's very, it's, it has a very hard edge. It doesn't look like it was painted on or spray painted on. So this would look good for handwriting. We wouldn't need to add any effects here. It's just a simple, thick stroke. That's all it is, but we wanna make this look like it was spray painted on. So in order to do that, we're gonna add a rough and edges effect here. We're gonna change our border to 27 and right away you see it start to warp a little bit. This looks like maybe it was like a paintbrush or something like that. We're going to take it a step further and make our edge sharpness five to make it a little bit sharper. And then with our scale, we're gonna drop this down to 12. So, you know, you could play around with what kind of look you want, but for what we're doing, I'm just gonna have ours at 12. And right away you can see it actually looks like it's being painted on now with like a spray can versus maybe being brought on with like a paintbrush where maybe I would keep it to like something like this. So play around with it, see what the effects look good for you. So now what we're gonna do is actually mat the layers. So we have our text layer and we have our matte layer. I'm going to just mat this here and right away you see how it animates on. Love it, super easy. And now that we've done the work for one letter, we can actually copy all of these assets and paste this onto our other letters. So what I'm gonna do here is take our trim paths from our 
uh, P mat, and then I'm going to paste it onto all of our other mats here. And then what I need to do is mat each text layer to their correct matted layer. So here, here, good, and T. But we also need to include the rough and edges. And sometimes when adding effects like this, you actually have to go back in and make some adjustments. Like look really quick, this is before I'm putting the effects in and right after you see that part of the text is uh, not showing. So like on the T here, if I wanted to, I could expand out the stroke a little bit. If I wanted to just have everything, it's really up to you. This is a pretty rough looking text and, and it's literally a rough effect. So I'm okay with this look, but I just wanna show you guys some options here. So here's what we have. Now this is looking good, but we can take it a step further just by offsetting these keyframes. So now what I'm gonna do is actually offset all of these layers by eight frames a piece. The next thing we wanna do is take all of our text layers here now and flip on motion blur, right click, pre-compose and call this paint pre. Now we're going to add a deep glow effect, change the exposure to 0.3 and change the blending mode to add. So it blends a little bit better with that dark brick background. This looks sweet. Now it's time to jump to our third text animation. The third text animation is what I'm coining the blur veal. So I'm a little punny from time to time and you are doing a reveal with a blur and it looks sick. So let me show you how it's done. I have a few different layers in here. I have this brown texture right here and all I did was add a levels effect and add make it black and white. And then I brought in the actual texture again itself and did our same animation as we did before that we have here. So it's doing the same exact animation. And this one's fun. So to animate the text, what we're gonna do is drop down this menu here, go to animate, opacity. Then we're gonna go up to our text again, animate, blur. Now with our blur, we're gonna make this, let's say 15. And then with our opacity, we're going to bring that down to zero. And we're gonna bring up our range selectors now for both. I'm gonna set a start keyframe, start keyframe, Go up to one second. And set another end keyframe. So right away, we see this text animate in and there's a subtle blur at the start as this is animating in, but because these keyframes are stacked on one another, it's really hard to tell. So what we're gonna do here is actually offset some of our keyframes. So I'm gonna go up, let's say six keyframes here for our blur and push that back. So it's gonna start off blurry and then it's gonna get into focus like that. All right, so next thing we're gonna do is just highlight our keyframes here and we're going to easy ease them. We're not gonna make any adjustments in the graph editor like we did in our previous example. So this is looking sleek. Now what I wanna do is actually duplicate this text. We're gonna call this one blur fill and we're going to call this one blur stroke. And we'll hide our fill. Now what we're gonna do is actually change this to stroke text right here. And we are going to go up, let's say, another six frames here. And now we are going to bring in our fill after our stroke starts to reveal. So it's gonna to start to reveal with our outline text and then our fill text is gonna come in. That's looking sweet. Now what I'm gonna do is actually mat our paper text animation to our fill layer. So everything's inside there. I'm going to duplicate this and I'm also going to do the same to our stroke layer. And then I'm going to bring this up earlier here so it covers the whole layer. And here's what we have. And this looks really sweet. So these are three very different ways you can animate text inside After Effects. Let me know which one of these text animations you like the most. Thanks for watching and stay creative.